Occasional check-ins with Rob. Just so everybody understands what's happening here today, it's really windy out, so I'm I'm actually filming from in, inside my car, and uh, and, and <laughs> Rob, Rob is standing outside the car, and uh, and yeah. It's a nice day, but we got a little bit of wind. A little bit of wind. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like you're trying to sell me drugs or something. Nick's there. actually really funny because he's sitting inside. What, what do you got here? A 2006 Pontiac Vibe. 2006 uh-huh. Pontiac Vibe. And yeah, so Nick's, 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 uh, uh, Nick's uh, 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 a good sized guy. And so he's sitting in the back of the Vibe. All jumped. He's squished in here like a good sized guy. I got your jeans. <laughs> <laughs> He's squished in here like a, a sardine inside of a can. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, here's an occasional check-in with Rob for you. What are you reading these days, Rob? Oh, I've been reading some really interesting books. Uh, the one I uh, really enjoyed lately was uh, Dr. Kai-Fu Lee uh, wrote a book called uh, uh, AI Superpowers, uh, China, Silicon Valley, and the New World Order. And it really talked about uh, the cultures of China and uh, and Silicon Valley, comparing and contrasting the two, and where we were going with uh, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Hmm. So who has the upper hand? Does China or Silicon Valley have the uh, quote-unquote right culture? <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, China uh, is working on this at a breakneck speed, and, and they're catching up rapidly. In fact, um, you know, one of the parts that's kind of humorous in the book is that the Chinese technology companies were, were largely known as copycats. They would take technology and copy it, sometimes verbatim, line for line. But uh, that copycat culture has lent itself to the development of all sorts of new technology capabilities inside of China. And now they're starting to break away from us. And, you know, the advantage that China has is if they make a decision to move in a technology direction uh, and the government backs that, uh, they will just make it happen. And uh, in North America, we're, we're constrained by all the regulatory processes that are associated with new technology. And I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying that China is able to move ahead faster. Yeah, it's an interesting thought, right? Like totalitarianism for all its faults. If if you have somebody who's like like got a forward vision and a hundred year plan, you can get a lot of stuff done. I mean, you know, on the backs of people and human rights and all that. But I mean, still, it's it's China's doing some incredible stuff right now in terms of world infrastructure and all that. Well, f- all their infrastructure that they're working on right now, and I've never, you know, uh, to be uh, truthful, I've never been to China. I, I want to get there one of these days, but. The book that uh, that that I read just says that the infrastructure they're putting in place and the incubation centers and the amount of uh, money and resources they're making available to startups in the IT world is uh, phenomenal, and they are rocketing ahead forward. Uh, they 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 in the book he talked that they may not be as creative as as coming up with the real world solutions that need to be solved, but once you show them the real world solutions that need to be solved, they go straight into it. They just really, really uh, go at it hard. This is funny too, because you know, again, as as a new parent with Elliot, I often I often think about how much how much uh, better it would be for me to be bilingual. But uh, I mean, you know, I was taught French in school, and 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 arguably, you know, not a not a the most useful language for getting around the the mm-hmm. world. So I'm thinking, like, if I had to teach Elliot a language, Mandarin, yeah, frick, like Chinese might be the one. Mandarin would be really important. Yeah, I I think that that is. Uh... A way forward, um, and and I I am concerned because it, what's going on with trade right now and negotiations creates is creating more divides between North America and China, and uh, I think that what we actually need is more coming together. But I don't know that that's in the cards. Hmm. Interesting. Well, there's another occasional check-in with Rob. Everybody, way to go! I like it again. It looks like you're selling me drugs right now. It's really funny. Occasional check-ins with Rob.